This morning I will read from God's Word, Psalm 107, verses 31 through 32. The Word says, Let them give thanks to the Lord for His unfailing love and His wonderful deeds for men. Let them exalt Him in the assembly of the people and praise Him in the council of the elders. Amen. May the Lord add blessing to the reading of His holy word. Our God is the one and only true God. And He is there because He made us. And He deserves our praise and our worship. He deserves everything that we can give to Him and much, much more. He made us. And yet we have failed Him. We're unworthy. But He provided a way and His name is Jesus, His Son. So would you pray a prayer with me this morning? Would you repent of your sins and pray for this service that the Lord would accept us and that he would be with us? Would you please humble yourself now before the Lord? Let us go to him in Jesus' name. Father in heaven, mighty God, we humble ourselves before you. We know that you are God Almighty, creator of all the heavens and the earth. We know that you are holy and righteous, and we know, Lord, we are sinners. But yet, Lord, you have paid the price. You have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus. For Jesus, we believe that you are the Christ, the Messiah, the Holy One of God. You are the Lamb of God. And you died for us on the cross. You became our sin. And you were raised in power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is with us today. And we thank you and we praise you and we give you glory and honor. Please, Lord, let your Spirit dwell in us. Let your Spirit lead us and guide us. May we come in your presence, Lord, for you are our God. Holy, hallelujah and holy God that you are. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for every soul and every family that's represented here today. I ask, Lord, that you would bless them, all those who hear this service, Lord, all those who attend. Lord, be with them in your power, your protection, and your love. Let us rejoice in you, Lord. Let us come to you and be pleasing in your sight. We want to empty ourselves and give ourselves to you. Not that worrying about anything else, but giving you all the glory and all the honor. For it is in your name, Lord Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Crown him with many crowns. Crown him with many crowns. Cause all them are on his throne. Hark how the heavenly hand comes out on music but its own. Awake my soul and sing of him who died for thee. And tell him as I'm matchless king through all his I crown him a heart of love, to behold his hands and fast. Rich words get men's Allah above, in beauty glorified. No angel in the sky can fully bear that sight. But downward is his burning heart at this glory so bright. I crown him the heart of peace, whose power of self dissuades. From pole to pole that words may cease, absorbed in prayer and praise. His reign shall know no end, and round his spirit be. Their flowers of paradise extend, their treasure of ever sweet. Amen. Amen. 
My life is in you, Lord. My life is in you, the Lord, my strength is in you, the Lord, my hope is in you, the Lord, it's in you, it's in you, my life is in you, the Lord, my strength is in you, the Lord, my hope is in you, the Lord, it's in you. I will praise you with all of my life. I will praise you with all of my strength. With all of my life. With all of my strength. All of my hope. Is in you. My life is in you, the Lord. My strength is in you, the Lord. My hope is in you, the Lord. It's in you, it's in you. My life is in you, the Lord. My strength. Is in you, the Lord, my hope. Is in you, the Lord, is in you, is in you. I will praise you. I will praise you with all of my life. I will praise you with all of my strength. With all of my life, with all of my strength, all of my hope is in you. My life is in you, the Lord, my strength is in you, the Lord, my hope. Is in you, the Lord, it's in you, it's in you, it's in you. Amen.
with me and let's go to the Lord giving him glory. Please repeat after me. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. The, Lord is the Lord is good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus, is Lord. Jesus is Lord. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Praise, the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen, and please be seated. And as you're taking your seats, turn with me to the book of Joel, Joel chapter 3, verses 9 through 16. That's Joel chapter 3, 9 through 16. Sister Wazel will read for us in the Korean language. Sister Wazel, please. 하나님께 주신 오늘의 말씀입니다. 요엘 3장 9절에서 16입니다. 너희는 모든 민족에게 이렇게 널리 선포할지어다. 너희는 전쟁을 준비하고 용사를 격려하고 병사로 다 가까이 나와서 올라오게 할지어다. 너희는 보습을 쳐서 칼을 만들지어다. 만들지어다. 낫을 쳐서 창을 만들지어다. 약한 자도 이러기를 나는 강하다 할지어다. 사면의 민족들아 너희는 속히 와서 모일지어다 여호와여 주의 용사들로 그리로 내려오게 하옵소서 민족들은 일어나서 요사바 골짜기로 올라올지어다 내가 거기에 앉아서 사면의 민족들을 다 심판하리로다 너희는 낯을 쓰라 곡식이 이것도다 와서 밭을 지어지어다 포도주 포도주 털이 가득 차고 포도주 독이 넘치니 그들의 악이 커미로다 사람이 많음이요 심판의 골짜기에 사람이 많음이요 심판의 골짜기에 여호와의 날이 가까움이로다 해와 달이 캄캄하며 별들이 그 빛을 거두도다 여호와께서 시온에서 부러지고 예루살렘에서 목소리를 내리시니 하늘과 땅이 진동하리로다 그러나 여호와께서 그의 백성의 피난처 이스라엘 자손의 산성이 되시리로다 아멘. Amen. Joel chapter 3 verses 9 through 16 Proclaim this among the nations prepare for war rouse the warriors let all the fighting men draw near and attack beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears let the weaklings say i am strong come quickly all you nations from every side and assemble there Bring down your warriors, O Lord. Let the nations be roused. Let them advance into the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit to judge all the nations on every side. Swing the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, trample the grapes, for the wine press is full and the vats overflow. So great is their wickedness. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and moon will be darkened and the stars no longer shine. The Lord will roar from Zion and thunder from Jerusalem. The earth and sky will tremble. But the Lord will be a refuge for his people, a stronghold for the people of of Israel. Amen. Let's pray, please. Father, I thank you for this, your holy word, and I thank you for this message, and I thank you for every soul and every person that's here, Lord, today to receive it. Oh, Lord, would you be with us, Lord? Please allow us, Lord, to have your eyes and ears, Lord, that we may draw near to you through this message and through this word, Lord, may it penetrate our hearts and accomplish your good and perfect will. Lord, we are in your hands, and we ask, Lord, for you to bless us and help us, for it's in Jesus' name we do pray, amen. This morning I want to speak to you about decisions. Our verse here, verse 14, is a very important verse. Life is full of decisions. We all make decisions every day, small and great. Sometimes we make good decisions, but unfortunately, we often make bad decisions. We even make bad decisions that can affect the rest of our lives. No matter how hard uh, we try not to let it happen, it happens. 
And if you're like most people, there are a few decisions that you've made in your lifetime as you think back over your life that if you could go back and change that decision, that's exactly what you'd do. You'd like to go back and change some decisions that you've made in your life. But you can't. You can't change the decisions that you've already made and time keeps marching on. So now you have to live with those decisions. You have to live with them and you have to make the best of it. What choice do you have? What choice? Don't look back though. You can't do anything about the past except hopefully You can learn from the past. You can learn from your bad decisions. You can learn from the things that you've done that you wish you hadn't. Do you know someone that keeps on making the same mistakes over and over and over? Maybe you do it sometimes because we're all weak. Having said that, though, some people, they're afraid to make a decision at all. They put it off and put it off. They try to get someone else to make that decision for them because they think, if I make the decision, then nobody can blame me if it doesn't go well. I didn't make the decision. They did. But indecision is as bad as no decision, maybe even worse if you don't make a decision at all or a bad decision. It may be worse than making a bad decision. We all have to make decisions. And it's good, I think, that we can decide. We have options. I certainly don't want to be one that can't decide. Most of my decisions aren't the final decision, though. Y'all realize that? Most of the decisions you make, they're not the final decision. Someone almost always, someone almost always makes the final decision over me and over you. For example, when I was young and my parents, uh, they made most of the final decisions for me. It didn't matter what I decided, my mom and dad, they would decide better for me. And when I got my driver's license as a teenager and my parents didn't automatically buy me a car in those days. In those days, you know, high schools, their parking lots didn't need to be very big because not all the seniors and juniors had cars like today. You notice how high school, one of the biggest things in the high school is the parking lot? It's because all their juniors and seniors got cars. And that didn't happen when I was growing up. Not many of us had cars. But if I wanted to go someplace over the weekend, I had to get permission to use the family car. I had to get permission to use it so that I could so that I could make some decisions with my friends about what we wanted to do over the weekend, I needed to get mom and dad to say, yes, you can use the car. And then I'd have to go mom and dad and say, hey, can I borrow the car? And they would say yes, or, or they would say no. It was, they made the final decision. Over the years, every time my wife and I have bought a house, we would always decide, which house to buy. Isn't that correct? Don't you guys that buy houses, you decide which house to buy, right? Yes, you do. But the mortgage company usually would have the final decision about whether you can buy that house or not. Is that not true? Usually they would tell you. You know, somebody we didn't even know. We didn't even know these people, but someplace somebody was deciding whether I could have that house or not that I wanted. Is that the, not the case with you guys? Most of y'all are independently wealthy, I'm sure, and you don't need a mortgage company. So somebody else decided for you whether you could get that house or not. And it's pretty much the same every place you go. My boss has a final decision for me at work. And by the way, everyone has a boss. So over the years, I have learned that it's good to be able to make a decision. And I like having options, don't you? I like having options. And I don't want to be one of those who is unable to decide, but I must realize this, and you too, that there is usually someone over me that makes the final decision no matter what my decision is, right? 
The biggest decision that I ever made in my whole life was when I decided to accept Jesus as my Lord and as my Savior. Biggest decision, greatest decision I ever made. And now Jesus makes the final decision in my life. Well, he does, and, and my wife does too, because the, sec the second greatest decision I made was marrying my wife, but first Jesus, and both of them make decisions for me sometimes too. But I do get to make some decisions in it all, even uh, I, get, I do get to say some things and do some things, but Jesus makes the final decision, and what he says goes. I can make a decision, but Jesus will ultimately make the final, final decision. In our passage of Scripture today, Joel is telling the people of Israel to wake up, and Jesus is the final, final decision, and everyone, I repeat, everyone will stand before Jesus as he gives the final, final decision about your life. We have the free will to make decisions about how we choose to live our lives. God gave us that decision. He gave us the free will, the ability to decide. You decide, you decide whether to you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior or not. You decide how you live your daily life, whether you live for him or not. But remember, you are not the final, final decision maker. You may think you are, but you're not. Consider today's scripture, verse 14. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Make no mistake about this. Jesus will make a final, final decision about each one of our lives. He will decide whether I am to live eternally in hell or eternally with him. So, what do we do? What do we do? Consider the following. First and foremost, knowledge. First, realize that we know enough to make the right decision. I've heard many people tell me, I don't know enough about God. I don't know enough about Jesus. But you know what? We know enough. In his holy word, God tells me that I know enough in order to align my decisions about the way I live my life and what I do with myself and align my life with his decision regarding me and my eternity. Romans 1, 18 through 20 says this. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godliness, godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what he has made so that people are without an excuse. Now, if I may translate that for you, he's saying, God is saying, you can say whatever you want because you know what? He has many things that's invisible, but he also has qualities that are visible. And everything he has made, we can see. His creation is all around us, and man had nothing to do with creation. And we don't know how it got here. If we don't know God, how did creation get here? That's what he's saying. I think this scripture is pretty easy to understand. You can argue, but you have no basis to argue except for you don't want it to be true. You don't want it to be true. 
You know, God has taken away one of the greatest excuses that mankind has ever had. And you know what that is? I didn't know. I didn't know. When I was young and I made plans to use a car, I could say to my mom and dad, hey, I didn't know that you and mom were going to use a car over the weekend. I made plans. And I'm sure that wouldn't have got me the car no matter how many times I said it. Or my wife and I could have told the mortgage company, wait a minute, we want that house. I didn't know you could tell us no, that we can't afford it. And I'm sure that would have gotten us the house and the loan that we wanted, even though we tell them we didn't know. I can always tell my boss, I didn't know that me because I didn't do my task on time or, or within budget, and I'm sure that would keep me my job and even get me a raise, right? No, it wouldn't. That's not the way things happen in this world, is it? You can say, I didn't know all you want. But it's not going to do you any good. And neither can I or you stand before Jesus Christ at my death and your death and tell him, I didn't know that my decisions would affect my afterlife. It's not going to work. I could tell Jesus that I didn't know that I had to accept him in order to go to heaven. Or I didn't know how living my life was going to affect his final decision about whether I spend eternity in heaven or in hell. I could tell him that. I didn't know Jesus. And Jesus' response is going to be to everyone that says that, the same response, you knew enough. You knew enough. He has told us enough to make the right decision. Number two, power. In God's word, he clearly tells me that I have the power to make the right choice. Now, I've heard many people come to me, and when they have problems, and they made bad decisions, and they knew they were making a bad decision when they made it, and they said, I just, it was, the temptation was too great. I couldn't say no. I couldn't do the right thing. I just didn't have the strength to do it. God says he gives us the power to make the right choice. I can make my decision of the way I live my life to please him. And I can make decisions that agree with the final decision that Jesus is going to make regarding me and my life because he gives me the power to do so. Joshua said this. Joshua said in Joshua 24, 14 and 15, he says, Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worship beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day who you will serve. Whether the gods your ancestors serve beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living now. But, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And Elijah said in 1 Kings 18, 21, How long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. But the people said nothing. With these two scriptures, it's very obvious to me that I can decide if I want to align my life with God or do my own thing. Based on just those two scriptures, there's many, many more, but those two are the only two I need. When Jesus arose from the grave on Easter Sunday, he gave me the power to make that choice. 
He gave me that power because in him is power, and he gives it to me. I can make a choice. He calls me to make the choice to follow him. And he calls you the same way. But I am free. I am free to make any choice I want to. Any choice. I can choose no, or I can choose yes, or I can choose no choice at all. But no choice at all is really a no choice. If I don't choose to follow him, guess what? I'm not following him. I'm not obeying him. Make sure that you understand what this means. Your mom and dad, they may be good Christians and were good Christians, but they cannot make that choice for you. Joshua was pretty specific. He said, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. And Elijah was pretty specific too. He says, if the Lord is God, follow him. Your praying grandma cannot pray you into heaven. Her prayers may move God to put you in situations where you might be given more opportunities to choose and to follow him, but you alone, you have the power to make that choice. In fact, if I could make the choice for you, I would have made it for every one of you already. You cannot stand before Jesus Christ on the judgment day, the day of the Lord, and say, I thought my parents took care of that, or I thought Grandma, she took care of all that for me. Parents and grandparents take care of a lot of their kids do and young people do today, but they cannot take care of their salvation. They can't save them. They have to make the right choice. And you not, cannot use the excuse, I did not want to make the wrong decision. Lord Jesus, I didn't want to make the right decision, so I made no decision at all. And there are people who have what I call paralysis of making a decision. They cannot make a decision. And there's a person in, in the Bible, in the book of Acts, Who makes no decision? I'm going to read it to you right here in Acts 26, 26 through 29. It says, the king, this is Paul speaking. He says, the king is familiar with these things, and I can speak freely to him. I am convinced that none of this has escaped his notice because it was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know you do. Then Agrippa said to Paul, Do you think that in such a short time you can persuade me to be a Christian? Paul replied, short time or long, I pray to God that not only you, but all who are listening to me today may become what I am except for these chains. Agrippa certainly, I think by his words here, he insinuates that Paul almost convinced him to become a Christian or he wouldn't have said what he said. But the problem is, he made no decision. When you stand before Jesus, and you will, you will, he's going to tell you that you had the power to make the right decision. That's what he's going to tell you. So the wrong decision or no decision is not an excuse. That's why one of the goals of every message, every message that I preach to you is to make a decision and to make a decision that aligns with Jesus' final decision in your life. That's why I stand up here before you today. I certainly am not here to entertain you. Maybe if I entertained you, there would be more of you here, but that's not what God called me to do. I'm here to tell you the truth based on God's Word because I believe this is God's Word. And it's our responsibility 
It's our responsibility. In God's Word, He tells us that since we know enough to make the right decision, and because we have the power to make the right decision, that when the final decision is made by Jesus Christ, it's all on us. His decision is going to be based on our decision. Y'all realize that, right? He makes the final decision, but he makes his decision based on your decision. It's all on us. It's our responsibility. We are responsible for our decision or the lack of decision. Galatians 6, 7, and 8 says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Obviously, you can make your own decision, your own choices about your life. God gave us that free will to do that. He doesn't beat us about the head. We're not robots. He calls us. And that is called free will. God gave us free will. But understand, the one who makes the final decision will make sure that you will receive your reward or your punishment based on your choices. You're the one that makes the final decision, and then he makes the final, final decision. The one who makes the final says, basically the final decision says, if you choose to live for something other than God, you will reap destruction. The one who makes the final decision says, if you choose to live for God, you will reap eternal life. Pretty obvious what God is saying. Jesus Christ will make sure that the consequences go along with the decisions we make. So no one can say that if they are going to eternal hell that Jesus did this to me. Nobody can say Jesus sends people to hell. They send themselves to hell because they make bad choices. And believe me, they know they're making bad choices when they make them. What's going to be really terrible, what's really going to be terrible for those people in hell is to know that they did it to themselves. They had so many opportunities. So many times they could have chose to do the right thing and they chose the wrong thing. And they know that they will suffer what they deserve. I don't know about you, but when I reap bad consequences here on this earth, and I know that it's my fault that I did it, you know, sometimes just feeling that way and knowing that way is just as bad, if not worse, as the consequences themselves. Knowing that you did this to yourself. We all make mistakes, and we all suffer some type of consequences, don't we? The problem is, Lord, help me, I did this to myself. That's as bad as the consequences of many times, is it not? To know that I put myself there would be just as bad as the burn. To know that I had so many chances, a God who called me and loved me, and I said no so many times. You know how we beat up ourselves when we do something stupid, right? I do things pretty stupid sometimes, and I beat myself up over it. Well, the person who puts themselves in hell, 
I'm sorry, they did the stupidest thing they could ever do. And I don't want to be them. I don't want to be them. So in conclusion, I must tell you, if you don't remember anything else about this sermon, please remember this. You don't have the final decision. You may think you do. God has the final decision. You don't have it. Jesus Christ, he has the final decision. And based on his word, his holy word, God will make that decision. He will, Jesus, he will make his final decision based on what? Based on your decision. His decision is based on yours. It's not arbitrary. It's not quota-driven. His decision is based on your decision. You have the knowledge, you have the power, and you have the responsibility. Please, make the right decision. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, mighty God, your word tells us that many people are in the valley of decision and the day of the Lord is coming. Whether, Lord, we live to see that day, we will see it in death. One way or the other, we will stand before you on the day of judgment. And yet, Lord, we are weak. We make bad decisions. O oh Lord, have mercy on us and forgive us. Lord, if we've been making the wrong decisions, and especially the decision to follow you, O oh Lord, let it be so now. Lord, may your spirit be strong with us now. May we feel your convicting power. May, Lord, you come upon us, Lord, and help us, Lord, to make the right decision. Lord, if you told us that if we truly want to do that, if we truly repent and humble ourselves before you, you will hear us and accept us and come to us, Lord. Oh, Lord, help us right now. If there's someone here who has not made the right decisions in regard to their salvation, if they've not decided to accept you as their Lord and as their Savior, Lord, let them do it now before it's too late. Let us all come to you, humbly before you, knowing that you are the Christ, the Messiah, Lord of lords and King of kings, and you will come back and you will call us, your children, forward. Oh, Lord, have mercy on our souls. Have mercy on us. You gave us the knowledge. You gave us the power. And you call us, and it's our responsibility to decide. Let us all make that right decision. Right now, Lord, let us decide correctly and for eternity. For it's in your name, Lord Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Praise the Lord.